Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Uh, today, uh, you have uh, entered into the daily. To this, this video right here is my first daily video. I am shooting this video on November 22nd, 2017. Today, and I will post this today. I thought I would uh, try and do some dailies and see how they uh, kind of go over. I want to talk about uh, kind of what's happening in the world uh, at the moment and uh, how it relates to, uh, to myself or to, to others and uh, let's see if you like it. Um, number one thing I want to tell you about, number one thing, um, if you like my channel uh, and you've forgotten, please subscribe. Uh, there's a subscribe button either here or here on the, your screen. Just click it and uh, you'll automatically be notified every time I do a video and uh, you can keep up to date with what's going on. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or if you like any of my videos, I invite you to check them out on my channel. Now, today, November 22nd, 2017, I want to talk about um, the passing of time and the passing of people. And uh, last night uh, in the evening, we got word that David Cassidy, who was uh, um, Keith Partridge on The Partridge Family, the TV show, passed away. Uh, 67 years old, died of uh, multiple organ failure. We knew uh, he was ill. In the last four or five days, we've been getting updates and bulletins, uh, and Twitter has been quite active regarding uh, uh, Mr. Cassidy's health, and it had been failing uh, lately, and we knew the end was near, and sadly, he passed. Thankfully, he had time to say his goodbyes. His family had time. Uh, he was surrounded by family and friends when he passed away, and I'm sure the doctors uh, made it as painless as possible for him uh, to, to ease the ease the pain and everything else. So. God bless him, uh, and uh, he has left us. But uh, he isn't gone. Um, David Cassidy was a sensation, a pop sensation, uh, one of those first heartthrobs, uh, well, television heartthrobs, I suppose. Uh, in 1970, ABC Television uh, launched a show called The Partridge Family, and um, uh, uh, David Cassidy played the uh, the uh, role of the eldest uh, son, Shirley Jones, his actual stepmother in real life, um, played the mom character, and there were a number of other siblings that were in this uh, suburban uh, California-based uh, band that went on to become famous, and uh, it's all make-believe on television. However. During pre-production and, and the lead up to the show, the producers of the show wanted to uh, produce uh, some songs for this band to perform on the show during the season. And uh, they had no idea that the show would become as big as it became, but they had the foresight to think about uh, producing some songs uh, with professional musicians. They used the Wrecking Crew in Los Angeles. If you don't know who the Wrecking Crew is, um, probably, three to four hundred of the top ten hits recorded through the 1960s and into the 70s were performed by uh, uh, studio musicians known as the Wrecking Crew in Los Angeles. And they were the best of the best, the best guitar players, best bass players, drummers, and, and, and uh, other instruments. And uh, these, uh, these musicians were brought in to produce the music for the Partridge family in, in the early, early, early days. And David Cassidy was uh, insistent enough to say, hey, you gave me the role of Keith Partridge for the Partridge family, and I know you've got Shirley Jones uh, playing my mom, and she certainly can sing, because she's a, she's a Broadway performer, movie performer, uh, fantastic singer. I want to sing on the, uh, on the soundtrack as well. Um, since I am the, uh, the lead singer of the group, I want to be on there. I can sing. My father... Uh, was a singer as, as well. Jack Jones uh, was his dad. And Jack Jones was a, a fantastic singer, performer, and actor as well, in his own right. And so the, uh, the producers thought, why not? Yeah, let's put him in the studio and let's get him singing in there and we'll do take after take until he gets it right. And if he's willing to work his tail off, let's go for it. And that's what happened. Uh, D Keith Partridge, or Keith, uh, <laughs> Keith Partridge, or David Cassidy, uh, was singing his actual own vocals. And it was the smartest movie ever made because um, the show was an instant sensation. It was number one in its time slot. It was broadcast on Friday nights at 8.30, um, number one in its time slot, a top 20 show. 
Uh, viewership for the Partridge family uh, was in the 11 to 14 million viewers per episode range. The second and third season were its best, highest rated, and uh, it dominated its its uh, time slot. No, the other two networks couldn't uh, put anything up against it to knock it off its perch. Uh, and the the uh, uh, the show was so popular that um, more recordings had to be made, more songs had to be recorded from just a demand. And the uh, the uh, record companies were screaming, and and uh, and uh, distributors were, were desperate for for anything to do with the Partridge Family. We all know that lunch boxes were made, calendars were made, uh, the teen magazines were filled with uh, with David Cassidy and other photos of the of the so-called band of the Partridge Family. And so a total of eight albums, eight albums were created for the Partridge Family in four years. <clears throat> uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, the song, I Think I Love You, became a number one hit on the Billboard charts, selling five million copies and outselling Let It Be from the Beatles in 1970. Un unreal. Uh, David Cassidy uh, 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 took this opportunity so that between seasons, between shooting the television show, he would have three, four months of time. He would be out on the road going globally on world tours, performing on stage. He became a millionaire uh, as a singer-performer uh, around the world doing this. So he had songs on the radio. He was releasing albums, uh, again, through the Partridge family. And then after the series ended, he was releasing his own. The show entered its fourth year in 1974. And at that point in time, by that time, the uh, cast uh, were pretty tired of it. Um, it had been a lot of work and it had been a whirlwind for, for David Cassidy. It had been unbelievable work. I had heard that he would be in Vegas on weekends or, or fly to uh, St. Louis on weekends to do a concert and then fly back to Los Angeles to film his next television show, the next week's show. I mean, it was just relentless, the schedule that he was under, the pressure. So when the fourth season came along, everybody was exhausted and they wanted this thing to be over with. And ABC Television, um, whether they did this on purpose or, or, or not, I don't know what their thinking was, but they had the number one time slot, Friday night, 8.30, with this show. They inexplicably put the Partridge family on television against All in the Family on Saturday night. <clears throat> and All in the Family at that time was the number one show in all of television. It dominated all the Nelson ratings, the Nielsen ratings. And so when the Partridge Family aired on Saturday nights against the, uh, the All, All in the Family show, it went from being a top 10, top 20 show on television to number 78. It was all over. And uh, maybe ABC television knew that they had a show that just wasn't up to the standards anymore. The scripts were becoming kind of weak. Uh, at the end of the fourth season, 96 shows had been made. And the last year's shows were probably pretty, pretty bad. And so, mercifully, it ended on television. Now, for David Cassidy, it didn't end. It continued on. He now could focus his full-time energies on live stage performances and recording uh, going forward. For the rest of the uh, Partridge family members, uh, for Susan Day, she got out of there and was able to join, a few years later, the cast of L.A. Law, which was a top-rated television show, a one-hour show. And she was nominated for four Emmy Awards in that show, winning one Emmy herself uh, as Best Actress. Fantastic news. Shirley Jones uh, went back to Broadway and uh, to movies and to other television. Uh, Shirley Jones was hardly unemployed. Uh, she did very well. But for uh, David Cassidy, he started touring the world and uh, did what he really wanted to do. He wanted to perform, make music and uh, records, and uh, that's what he did for a number of years. Uh, so the passing of David Cassidy is sort of... Uh, for a certain member of our world, a certain age group of our generation, uh, is, a, is, a, is a passing, a, a milestone. It's a, sort of a, an icon having passed us by. Uh, whether you liked his music or not, it didn't matter. He was an incredibly popular person on an incredibly popular show. And in the early 70s, they held a special place in the hearts of a certain demographic of people. And um, um, in my case, uh, uh, one of those iconic moments uh, happened suddenly and without warning, uh, tragically, in 1980. Uh, 16 days from now, on December the 8th, 1980, John Lennon was killed 
outside of his apartment, uh, the Dakota Apartments in New York City. And um, if you ask anyone my age or older, uh, where were you uh, when you heard uh, John Lennon was killed? Uh, we can tell you uh, pretty certainly where we were. In my case, I was at home watching television, Monday Night Football, and uh, Howard Cosell announced the death of John Lennon on national television, also ABC television, ironically, um, and he announced it on Monday Night Football, and, and that spread like wildfire. That news spread globally like wildfire. It was probably about... Uh, about 8 in the evening where I was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It was 10 in the evening in New York. And it would have been, uh, what would that have been? 2 or 3 in the morning in London, England. And uh, within hours, within a few hours, the world knew that John Lennon had passed us. And uh, that was a shock. That was a terrible shock. And it changed every one of us who experienced that. It, it affected us. Uh, we were stunned. The world was stunned when it happened because it happened so violently and uh, totally uh, inexplicably. And we're still dealing with it, unbelievably. And another uh, passing uh, happened uh, um, uh, that was also significant today, November 22nd, 2017. Go back uh, to uh, November 22nd, 1963. On this day, it was a Friday, John F. Kennedy was killed, assassinated in Dallas on this day. <clears throat> November the 22nd, and um, you ask anyone of, uh, if you had asked anyone who was alive, uh, say 20 years old or older at that time, where were you when you heard the news, they can instantly tell you exactly where they were that moment in time. Um, uh, people uh, refer to the JFK assassination as the first real uh, event that happened on television um, because for, from that moment on, from Friday afternoon on, on, on uh, uh, November the 22nd, 1963, until through Saturday, through Sunday, and even Monday, television was non-stop following the events of the assassination of the president. Uh, but in reality, the president wasn't assassinated on television. He was not, uh, this was not broadcast on television. The assassination occurred uh, in the afternoon in his limousine as he was driving to an event. Uh, and there was no live television on the uh, president at that time. The only video or only movie that exists, a film that exists of the assassination, was done by a private individual named Zabruder, who was uh, holding an 8mm home camera, home movie camera, and he was filming the limousine just driving by where he happened to be standing. And uh, at the moment that the limo was passing him by, the president was assassinated by uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Two days later, on the 24th of November, 1963, however, an assassination was broadcast on live television. A number of networks were carrying the supposed transfer of Lee Harvey Oswald. He was supposed to be transferred from the Dallas police station in downtown Dallas to the, uh, I believe it would be the Dallas County Jail. He was going to be transported there. And television stations were going to broadcast the event of him being walked down an aisleway, a hallway, to a, a waiting uh, a vehicle to take him to uh, the jail. They brought in a Brinks armored uh, truck to carry him, to, to take him, transport him to jail. They figured we'll, we'll make it a bulletproof truck, truck because all kinds of people want to get this guy. And wouldn't you know it, as he was being led in handcuffs down the, uh, the walkway towards the truck, uh, an individual popped out from where all the reporters were standing with a handgun and shot uh, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald in the abdomen uh, on live national television. And within 15, 20 minutes, he was dead. Unbelievable. So uh, the, the, the event, that, those events were just stunning and it just riveted the country. The United States and the world were riveted to this story. And um, uh, JFK uh, sadly lay in state and then uh, they, they covered the funeral and it was a, just a terrible week. So, um, you know, when people die, uh, depending on how it happens and when it happens, uh, we remember. And, uh, and so you have JFK, you have John uh, Lennon, and, and now we have David Cassidy. But, but in the case of David Cassidy, thankfully, this wasn't a tragic uh, sudden event where he was pulled away from us uh, violently or anything like that. He died. Uh, surrounded by his uh, by the people who loved him the most and uh, died peacefully age 67 we'll say it's too soon yes we will say it's too soon but um, 
that's the way it goes sometimes. For some, you die with your family around you. For others, you don't. You just never know when it happens, and that's the way it goes. Uh, anyway, today, that is my first daily. Uh, I'm going to post this video later today. I don't know if you'll like it or not. I hope you do. Um, I'm going to try and do one of these every day going forward, and uh, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. No idea. We'll find out what the uh, what the world is doing and uh, see what uh, captures my uh, my interest. If any of you out there uh, are watching this video, tell me where you were when you heard the news about someone famous passing away on you. Uh, Kurt Cobain, or uh, where were you when Batman died? Uh, uh, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I can't remember his name right now. I can't remember it. Um, Adam, Adam West, I believe is the name. Where were you when you heard about that? Or uh, JFK, or John Lennon, or uh, uh, or someone else that uh, that passed away that you couldn't believe uh, the news when you heard it? Uh, leave them in my comments uh, down below, and uh, I'd be quite curious to see what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching my video today. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I hope you like it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time on Traveling with Bruce. Take care, everybody.